Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season 11 of this West Indies rebuild and things are coming in hot. We are bagging up 75 big boy points, joint 7th for the first time. The number 1 and 2 bowler in the world. We've just beat Ireland, we've just beat England, we've just beat Sri Lanka and we almost beat England away. And if we look at results from 2032 for 2034, we have the fourth highest win percentage of any team in Test cricket. If you put it over the full time, we're at 36% and we're not quite there. But we do have some new views to look at. So I have been doing a bit of a deep dive. And what I've done is taken the top players from eight different countries, looked at their second team averages in the game, and then mapped them against their Test match average. And I did this pick in the people with the highest amount of test runs. And what you can see is the second team average across all eight teams minus the West Indies is 60.93. Our average for our second team players is 50, a doubt or a 10, which means our players coming through are generally 21% worse than the other top seven playing test nation. Only two players in test cricket at the moment average over 60. And what I've created is a test versus second team average versus test average. So if you average more than your second team average, then you're in the hundreds. And you can see the majority of players, there's only five players here, average more in test cricket than they do in the second team average. And this essentially puts the second team averages into buckets. So if you average between 30 and 40, you're here, 40 and 50, 50, to 55, 55 to 16, all the way through. And then it maps the test max averages with a line going through it at 40%. And essentially, what you are saying is to average 40 in test cricket, you really need to have a second team average of at least 60. Now, people do have it. Um, if we look at this radar here, there's a couple, five of them, average in the 50s, uh, average over 40 in test cricket but the majority of them don't which unfortunately for us causes us a massive issue because we don't have many players in second team cricket that average 60. Uh, Moa Beer has come in and is averaging 31 in test cricket extremely young he averages over 60 but everyone else that we've tried either fall in the 50 category the 40 category or at worst the 30s. This has got the players that we've tried lately, not the original players. Also really interesting that very defensive players have a second team average of 52, but the lowest test match average, so a 58% um, score ratio on that. So you're actually looking for players that are at least average aggression, ideally. And this little table's got a second bin column. So these are the average ranges in second team cricket. And you've got the countries across the top and how many fall into each category. And you can see all of these teams have got players with 65 to 70, 75 to 70, 75, 75 to 80, 85 to 85, 85 plus. Uh, Australia, England, India peppered with these. Uh, but we're not getting anywhere close. We're just filling up the lower tiers. And this scatter graph... Again, just kind of calls it out. So we're the red, we're the West Indies. This is the 80th percentile line for second team averages. 50% is at the 58 marker. Everyone except one player for us is below the 50th percentile for people that's played test match cricket to a meaningful degree for the top eight countries. And somehow I'm putting us in that top eight countries. So hopefully that gives some insight into what's going on in the game. I think there is a full experiment to do with that. Um, but I think second team cricket is a really good indication of percent potentially what sort of rating these guys are. You can see all the top guys in the world. Jaiswell, Gil, Yoshi, uh, Dool, Babra Zam. Excellent players. All averaging very high. Except Shubham Gil. Except you and Ollie Pope. Um, but some exceptional averages by the guys. Also, Perez, who we opened with that time, averaged 8.5 from his two test matches. That's not really a real number. But you can see the lower echelon is... Uh, there's a plethora of West Indies players. Uh, Sempal, Chanderpaul. You really need uh, people in this top echelon. So like a Samaru. Samaru averaged 41 in second team cricket. 37 in test cricket. 91% of the way there. That is really good. Griffiths and Jackson are both up there in the 80s. Kind of need, for us, given our low second team averages, 
We need people in this 80th percent. But remember the Test World Championship. Let's move on. Four and three, looking good. Uh, we've got a bumper episode, ladies and gentlemen. We have got a lot going on this time. New Zealand in the West Indies. New Zealand, number one in the world now. So that is going to be a challenge. We're going to host them for three test matches on our Seamers decks. Two test matches at home against Bangladesh. A battle of seventh and eighth. All right, we're going to India and that's going to be pretty tough. And then we go to South Africa where we've had no joy so far. That will be tough before finishing off against our foes of England. So it's going to be a big one. Strap yourselves in. Got about 13 test matches of action, good action, quality action to go. We are, interestingly enough, starting to get a few more players averaging over 40 in the first class game over the course of the last three years. Lewis, who's been part of our setup of average 67 and 76 in the last few years. Great century ratio. Got the Seamers deck, New Zealand at home. Safe to say... We've done okay against New Zealand. We beat them 2-0 back in 2028. A 1-1 tie the series in 2025 before a bit of a drubbing in 2031. We go with our usual attack, the three seamers batting down to seven. Seamer friendly conditions, bowling first. Um, this is going to be interesting because they have some really talented batting. Murray's averaging 60, Crawford 50, Dawes 50, both openers in the 44s. We've not got one above 40. And with the ball, Willow Rourke, well, we've just seen him do well in Sri Lanka in real life. Uh, Fulks was number one rated bowler at one stage in the England save as well. That's a toughie. 393 Edmonds. Openers, the good openers. They put on 150 for the first wicket. And then Tennyson. He's been scoring some nice... Hey, that's a nice looking scorecard. Just plethering the ball down straight. I love to see a bit of that. He averages 47. He scores runs against us. Delaney with runs. Murray, 27 years old, 22 tests, averaging just under 60 now. Uh, five for the Gamroop, cheap five, going at 120, uh, going for 123 runs. Louis with 70, but one brings two, brings seven. In the case of Julian Ritchie, seven for 37. He was outstanding here. Wickets, bang, bang, bang. Middle of the order, blown away. Hilton and Moabir both going for ducks. Thorne are golden. Yeah, we're, we're chasing a few. We bowl them out for 182. But unfortunately for us, that might mean the pitch is getting significantly worse. There's 10 wickets in the game for the Gamster. He has got 296 wickets at 30.22. 19 fifers. What a specimen. Uh, we're going to need a lot on a pitch that is uneven and turning. And we've got a 10% chance of winning. One of the great moments in West Indies cricket. We've just knocked off 388 for just four down. Griffiths, he said, don't pick him. He's been our guy. He was averaging over 40 at one stage. He gets 89 not out of 298 balls. Pretty much chanceless. Batted superb. But Stephen Samaru smashes the ball around. Four sixes, 16 fours in 184. Chasing. What a knock that is. He takes his record to 39.91 with four centuries. We win the first test against New Zealand against all odds. Second test, we're four and a half stars. Let's go, we're bowling again. And they get 400 this time. Edmonds is having a series, 145 here. No drop catches, but two centuries, two games. Uh, good for him, he's batting well. Our bowlers struggle, Ned gets three, but they were... It wasn't a very good bowling performance by the team. We struggled to make him rose. There was big partnerships, 52 for the last wickets, an absolute killer as well. We're way behind this game. Yeah, 140 behind. Belgrave with a ton. Griffiths with 80. They put on 187, but there's nothing else. I made the mistake. You know, on this game, sometimes you're just not allowed to touch the aggression. If you touch it, uh, you're just automatically going to lose wickets. Well, it happened. I touched the aggression slightly, and we lost three wickets in three overs. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but we're, we've got a chance. We've just cleaned him up for 135. Thorne, 5 for 59. Superb. He goes to 371 test wickets now. Gives you a great deal of satisfaction knowing they're all under you. We've blitzed them. Day 3, session 3. If we can knock them off on day 4 before the ring... If we could knock them off. We normally get bowled out for less than 200. Uh, it's just we had a moment in time that worked. We've got a chance. Don't tell anyone. 31 to win. We've got two wickets left. 
Griffiths, he's come in red hot this year. 89-80. Now 118 not out. The pitch is erratic. It's doing bits. Every time we come back after a session, we lose wickets. Our tail is flimsy, but we only need 31 to win. 13 to win. 10 to win. Griffiths on strike. Pulls away a full toss. It's going to go to the boundary. Six to go. Five to go. Griffiths on strike. Comes down. It's edged away. It's going to be a single. One run to win. This is one of the most remarkable series of all time. And we're just going to take a little single on the inside. We knock off 276. We are officially the Chasing Kings. Griffiths is enjoying a career start. A 42.16 career average now, uh, based on the back of two very good games. This was done partnerships towards the back end. So many times our back end is falling away so quick. But Griffiths and Thorne with 76. Griffiths and Anderson with 52. Is it down to their weakness in their bowling? Or is it just our players coming of age? We've won the series against New Zealand. Absolutely unchanged. A chance of the sweep. We've lost the toss all three tests as well. That's quite remarkable. 2-4-4 all out. Ned 4 for 21 off 18. That is an amazing performance on day one of a test match on a seamer's deck. The control. The wickets as well. Dawes. Crawford. Tennyson. The rule. He's breaking them down. We're breaking through. Uh, no, we're not breaking anything here. We're going to take a big deficit of 89. Belgrave with 50, Louis with 31. Uh, Griffiths couldn't back it up, could he? What three amazing knocks. He had to go for a quick one here. Um, yeah, just blown away at the back end. Four for 89, 155 all out. Richie picks up six. Sneakily good series because he had a seven as well. But we're not going down without a fight. Second ball of the innings. Chance 120 all out. Tennyson frustrates, not for the first time in the series. He's put in a meaningful contribution when our bowlers were on fire. Gamroot 4, Anderson 3, Thorn 2. They were nailing through them. We had him 8 for 65. And the ad, about another 55 runs. So 210 it is to win for the sweep. Do not turn off. This is legit. We are actually taking this team to the next level. Belgrave, 50 in each inning, 74 not out here. Wonderful knockoff, 174. Takes his average just below 35, don't tell anyone. But that's quite good for us. 37 last year, coming of age. We get home against New Zealand. And let's just break this down for a second. We chased 388. We chased 276. And we just chased 210 to sweep them in a series that has seen three players average above 40. Louis 32, he'd like, he, he's done as an international cricketer, but I'm still holding on because there's nothing else. Uh, we've done this with Hilton averaging 11, Lewis averaging 15, Moabir averaging 18. But the bowling was immense. All four stud muffins, nest stud muffins, nailing it. We are 82 points. We've gone past our initial points setting that was given to us at the start of the save. And we're in seventh for the first time. And for the first time in a long time, we've got a batter in the top 20. Go Belgrave. How's that Test World Championship looking? Uh, yeah, good, thank you very much. Um, just an outside chance of not finished bottom for the first time. Bangladesh next. They've actually caused us quite a few problems. We lost 2-0, won 2-0, split the series one apiece and lost 2-0. We're 3-5. and five. But they're coming into our hometown in, a, in an arena that we're performing quite well in. Also, if you want to look at the top players coming through, uh, we've got a couple of players, Beckford and Elaine, both averaging in the 60s in second team cricket. Beckford averaging 39 in first class cricket and CC Elaine not getting a game. What is that about? I just got to look at the Test World Championship again. This is unreal. Uh, Bangladesh at home, seam index. They're not a bad team on this Bangladesh. They are 10th in the world and we are officially 7th. So we may choose to look down our noses on them. Uh, Ramroop, 5th place in the all-rounder stake. And we've got the top 3 bowlers in the world. All over 1,000 points, which is impossible in real life. But Isaiah Thorne in 6th as well. Anderson has been a real good addition to our bowling attack. He's averaging 24 with 125 wickets in 28 appearances. There's a lot of twos going on in that, and that's because he's doing very well. We're not going to change. We've got 
three batters this calendar year from that last series averaging over 40. And I'm just going to ignore the mess that is the rest. We're just under four stars. Won the toss. We've been amazing chasing. Going to bat. Let's just have a little look-see at their team. They've got one, two, three, four players averaging in the 40s. Kazmi mustn't have played many games to be averaging 80. And bowlers are middling. Islam's caused his problem, though. He caused his problems in the England safe. 247. It's not great. 52 from Louis and 52 from Lewis down at the bottom of the Indians. Hey, Lewis, how are you going with your 52 domestic average? I'd like you to take that into test cricket. Uh, we struggled in the middle. Belgrave, Griffiths, Moabir. Moabir is he's only 22 years old. Domestic average of 63. Like You've got to believe he's going to get there. Um, but yeah, trouble here. Murad had a great day out against us. Uh, pitch will do bits. Nobody walks into the West Indies anymore and expects an easy time of it. We've bowled them out for 128. Anderson 5 for 33. We've got the real deal in Anderson. Domestic cricket, 86 wickets at 17. Test match, 130 at 23. This is outstanding. They're going to need 330 to win. We get 210. Uh, there's Belgrave 50. He's having a great campaign, isn't he? Test cricket is... Uh, is suiting him at the moment. He's getting past these starts that he used to get. 3.30 is chaseable. We've shown that. Um, but we do have the better conditions to play in. But it's so early. Day 3, Session 1. Oh my days, how have we won it? They were cruising, brother. They were 5 for 306. And we bowled them out for 310. This team is just built differently at the moment. Anderson with a four. Thorne with a four. They were cruising. 115 run partnership we broke. Then a 72 <laughs> with Kazmi. And then we blew away the back end. Wicket, 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 wicket. Somehow, way, we've won the game. Murad managed the match for his eight wickets. But Anderson took nine and won the game. Thorne took eight. A chance of another series win. The chance of another sweep. People are going to start calling us the West Indies sweep. We swept Ireland, swept England, swept New Zealand. Can we sweep Bangladesh? The key thing, they're all at home. We're controlling the conditions. And we swept we swept Sri Lanka previously at home. Yeah, we're bowled out for less than 200. A batting still isn't great. Hilton scores 69 here. It's a score. You know, he got that 160 against England, which was magnificent. Uh, but we're, f we're flaky as. 61 run lead. They haven't got away, but they're definitely in control of this game. Good start for them. They were 1 for 105 at one stage. We chipped away throughout. That was the thing. There was partnerships. We never really broke through, nor did they break away. They will be favourites for this game. Yeah, they're favourites by a long way. 177, all that. Belgrave and Mabir with some runs, but Lewis out. First ball, man. He has been very poor. 29 this year, 26 the year before that, 26 the year before that. We probably do need a replacement now. We almost won it. They won by three wickets, even though we only had two bowlers, but they took four and three apiece, scored at a fast enough rate to get across the line. So, uh, well played Bangladesh. Better team here, but batting, holy moly. Uh, batting has had these moments in the fourth innings, but it's still filtered with... 180 all out, 200 all out. And the fact is, the highest average here was 32. And the thing that gets us by is just this bowling attack is built differently. It doesn't mean we still remain second in the World Test Championship, but there's a long way to go. It is worth noting how good our form has been. We've gone from a team that would win two or three games a year, 27% win percentage, to a team that is, it's not the real deal, but it's not a bad deal. This is looking at test teams from 2032 to 2034, which we are currently in, sorted by average. We we no longer have the worst test average going around. We average 25, but our bowling attack is leaps and bounds above everyone else, averaging 24.25. Quite remarkable. Go, squad for India. Stop the press. We've got a second team player coming through with a 78 average. No first-class experience yet, but that's a watch this space. Okay, West Indies away. Sorry, West Indies. India away. A team that's caused us problems. Played six, lost six. Pitch, well, it might do bits. It's hard to know. It's got its foot in both camps. 
We could bring in Bishop and go with two spinners in the lineup. Or we play the extra bat. We're playing Wickham. He's a bat, predominantly. Averages 39, but can give us a couple of overs if we need him. We drop down to four stars. It's the wrong move, but we're playing against an absolute juggernaut. 209, just. Hilton, 65. Gamroop added to add 27. Samaru, 56. But Griffiths, Mabir, Wickham, nothing there. We're back to this guy taking wickets against us again. They've had to declare... Mongia scores 236. One LBW chow. That's it. Like He has peppered us all around. 13 centuries from 43 games. Uh, top score. Bowlers were going around the park. Always overrated India on this game or overpowered. Their run rates they score at are ridiculous. There is no chance in how we win this game now. Uh, lose by an innings in 72. That is a pasting. They are still an exceptional team. But watch the press. We drew with Bangladesh and we're on 91 points now. We're in sixth. We're no pushover. I've got to make the change of Moa Beer. I can't sit there and watch the kid average 26 from 17 games. That's a long... Look at it, 63. Phil, he needs more first-class cricket and I might have ruined him. Because originally his second team average was super high in the 60s and now it's down to 54. So maybe I chose him too soon. So, okay, we just go back to the conveyor belt and the roundabout, and Lewis is the guy that is coming in. Still remain four stars. Here again, 375. Mongia with another century. He's in decent, Nick. We do drop him, but square of the wicket, hammering it. Maybe let's try bowling full to win. Thorn with five, but Gamroop's gone down. Injured, he's out for six days. Probably this test, probably the next. 317, it's not bad. Louis with 98, that's his first top score in a... A long, long time. But we're actually batting well here. Three for 223 runs from Louis Belgrave and Hilton. And then just more of this, 20s. Quite often if we're playing at home on a seaming deck, I'll go, well, if these guys can all score 20, 25, we get a score. Never say never. 216 all out. Rayo, 102. I don't know why I'd say it like that. Rayo, 102 of 20. But if you don't take your catches, you're not going to win many matches. Uh, and it didn't work out very well here. He's another guy's averaging... 48. Makes it look incredibly easy. Wickham with four. Watch this space. But we need a lot to win and we don't do it very often. Why don't you do it very often? Because your middle order is a sieve. 84 law out. Gamroop just back from injury but not fit. Jaden Seals is getting his first game in years. 3-5-1 and it's a frustrating 3-5-1 because they had 26 for the last wicket. We, we made inroads. We got these moments of momentum off the back of Thorne, off the back of Ned. Couldn't take control. This was a really good performance because Singh scored 80 in no time. Rayo scored 96. We're not completely out of the game, but the pitch is very poor. Oh, I'm over our batting at times. We've been doing really well in periods, but this 0-0-0-1-4-0-2. Man, it eats you up because Belgrave scored 100. Louis scored 96. Samaru, 48. We're not very good at getting in. So many times we just flake away. We could have been at least at parity there. 290 to win. Not outplayed here with the ball. I think we've held ourselves in decent regard other than one innings. Wicket spread around. We kept chipping away. 203 to win. On the last day, sharp turn, erratic bounce. Game India. Griffiths is doing one of his fourth innings heroics. Lewis is on 18, not out. What a specimen this guy is, averaging 29 in his test career. Uh, but we've, we've got an opportunity here. Six wickets, 75 runs. What wins? Six wickets or 75 runs? The six wickets won easy by 21 runs. Uh, Griffiths and Lewis went very, very quick. Five for Sharma, who has a field day against us once again. And this guy, Kelpanith Siram. That's a useful record. Go down 3-0 in India. We didn't really expect anything different, but Belgrave and Louis both with exceptional performances. Samaru passable, uh, but Moabir, nothing. Wickham, 13. Was it really worth the change? We could have gone with Bishop and got the same and maybe a better bowl. Griffiths, Lewis, Hilton, very, very poor. And with the ball, we struggled. Ned was great. But Thorne, Anderson, Gamroot getting injured. It all just fell apart. We're still in sixth, though. 
South Africa time, and it's safe to say South Africa has not been happy hunting grounds for us. Played eight, lost eight. There's not one player with a career average over 40. Uh, Moabir is out injured, which it's only a day, but I think it's an excuse to let him go. Go back, get some domestic first-class cricket under your belt, son, because I've potentially ruined you as a cricketer by bringing you in too early. And we're going to see this guy called up. Augustine, a 47 second team average, 22 years old, 21 first class games, averaging 41 with the bat. That's a very reasonable record, a couple of centuries thrown in. South Africa, could we? Could we dream? We're in third place somehow in the Test World Championship. <laughs> As We're there because we've won eight games, that is what's going on. But India and South Africa could well put a dent in that. Were flaky. Look at the test match averages. Samaru and Louis both averaging 36. I don't think Louis is going to make it to 100 tests, which is a shame. Uh, but his downturn is quite significant. Belgrave 35. Griffiths 38. You expect that to keep working its way down. Wright, Lewis, Hilton. There's nothing there, is there? The bowling is exceptional, though. Fawn 400 wickets. Ned 300 wickets. Let's just have a look all time. And we see Thorne, as the, he, he will overtake, get this, Kirtley Ambrose for the most wickets. <laughs> Second most wickets. Gamroop on 310, he's just gone past Kimar Roach. Ned has gone past Sobers, Holding and Gardner. He's got Lance Gibbs and Kimar Roach just ahead of him. And Anderson on 144 already. With the bat, Louis, he's got the chance to go past Ronan Kenai with, with his one knee drive. Belgrave off almost as many runs as Shy Hope. But we're back to what we like. This looks like a seeming deck to me. Everything says bat, but we've been really good chasing. I've got a bat. I haven't got the balls not to bat. 101 all out. We were 4 for 27. Kumalu. <laughs> Kumalu. Like, 411 wickets. But it's an average of 33. But when he turns up against us, the guy's like the next incarnation of Fred Truman. 206 run lead. Uh, Krongy, uh, 114. Not come get across this guy so far. Averaging 40. Domestic cl first class average of 47. We'd like someone like you. Gamroot, 4. Ned, 4 for 25 from 15. Incredible. Held us together for uh, the best part of 30 over spell in parallel with the other end. That's one of the worst losses we've had. We score less than 300 runs in the game. Lewis scores a 50, but crikey Kumalu. And that's us having a good year with two guys averaging 40. Changing. Gone with the extra spinner for this. Hopefully it's going to turn quite a bit. We're going to win the toss and bat first and bat for a day and a half, right? Okay, 317. I'm going to take it. We bat more than a day. Hilton with 122 with the finest. He was dropped. But it's 122. We're going to... Take that every single day of the week, six centuries, an average of 30 in his career. Like, we are so bad. 78 from Belgrave. They shared a 196 run partnership uh, before we became the walking wicket. Oh man, I was willing away that last wicket. We've got a lead of 150 here. Anderson and Thorne were brilliant. Took out the top four in no time. Four for 80. And then Gamroop. Uh, and Ned did their thing. It's a 150-run lead on a pitch that isn't that bad yet. If we lose this, I'm going to be so frustrated. This is to tie the series. We get another 50 from Belgrave, who has been good this year. He's been good. There's runs. There's consistency. There's everything you want. Now he's 30. He's in his peak. He's averaging 48 this year. We get a century from Griffiths. Possibly the best, great, great form. Uh, possibly the best youngster we've had come through in a while. 30 years old now, 39 tests, six centuries to his name. We got meaningful runs from Bishop at seven with the extra spinner and a little bit of bat. It's not as bad a pitch as you think, but they do need four, five, six. In spite of a lot of mediocre batting and batting collapses, we've gone to South Africa and tied the series. Hilton with 100. Griffiths with 100, Belgrave with a pair of 70s. Man, this kid has been good this calendar year. To see it, 48, 37 last year is good and just good enough with the ball. We tie South Africa. We move into the 90s. That's like a reasonable cricket team. Isaiah Thorne moves up to third in the world rankings for all-rounders somehow. What is his batting average? 
eight. <laughs> There's no all-rounders in world cricket. Ned's the number one bowler in the world. Belgrave up to 14th in the world ratings. And with the bat, Hilton, Belgrave, Griffiths all averaged over 40. Everyone else, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And with the ball, Ned 8 for 11. Man, 308 wickets at 21 is just an unreal. And his economy rate of 2.65. Quite incredible. Great performance from the team. I know I sounded pretty down on it earlier, but we just tied South Africa before we go and play England. This is a biggie. Fourth versus fist in the Tef World Championship. I can't believe that's something I'm actually looking at meaningfully. How many tests is it? I think it's a three-test match series. A three-test match series. Imagine winning all three of these. Would be still in the Test World Championship. Maybe third. We'd drop down to seventh in the world rankings. Surely win this series. We would overtake them. They do have the number one batter in the world. Helstead scored us lots of runs against us last time. Just ultra-consistent. 22 centuries. Average of 45 in his career. But they don't have a lot in the top 20. With the ball, Shower Bashir is still good in 12th. Played 19, won 6, lost 13. Uh, but the story is quite different. We've won 4, lost 3 over the last couple of years. Going to be Wickham at 7 over Bishop, I think. We're going with our usual seeming deck. And this is what's kind of worked for us before. It does give us another option. And his bat's probably just as good as someone else averaging mid-20s. Ah, raka, raka, 136 all out. There's no, there's no words here. Shao Bashir and Rian Ahmed, eight wickets on day one on a non-turning pitch. 52 run lead. We bowl them out for 188. So if we just scored 200, we would have been all right here. Darcy scores more runs against us. Against the West Indies, he's averaging 45. He bats really well. Thorn was superb here. Kept chipping away through their middle order. It is starting to break down. The bounce is uneven and we've got a massive loss, but it's... It's session one, day two. 2-6-2 two, two to win. Hilton scores another century. Samaru and Lewis put on 84 for the opening wicket. We get our usual. We can't do much else. But the form of this man, 27 years old. Maybe I pick players too young on the game. Because he is just starting to come into his own, averaging 32 this year. But more importantly, it's not the 32 average. It's two centuries that change games. Pitch is erratic. Oh, not quite. Uneven bounce. Probably advantage England, but we've got a chance. No, they get home by three wickets. Malik and Wales, two incredible players on the game. They take them home. We couldn't get the breakthrough. Parry with 40, not out at the end. We are playing against England. I can't get too carried away going, I can't believe we're losing to England when England are a much better team and have much greater resources than what we've got. Yeah, Sirius could be gone. They get 4-6-3 here. 89 for Bates, 89 for Darcy, 70s for Bean and Malik. Uh, they were 2 for 320 at one stage. Ned worked hard for his 5. Uh, but Rian Ahmed, those runs down the order really kill you on this game. 120 behind. We don't bat bad, but same again. As soon as we get through the top 4, the last few wickets go for not too many. Lewis, he's been in decent form. There's 50s. Well, there's 90s. That's the thing. He's just not converting them into the centuries like he did. Because at the start of his career, he went and scored some really big scores. Um, some good stuff in there, but we're a long way behind the eight ball here. Infinite aura around Thorne. He is definitely in second place all time. 422 wickets at 27. He bags five. We roll through them for 169. We need 291 to win on a bouncing... Uneven, turning wicket with Bashir and Rian Ahmed in the team. Lose by 65, and I, I I don't know how to tell you this, but the same thing happened again. We had a reasonable start. Samaru and Belgrave put on 101, looked really good. And then the middle order can't get in against spin at all. Final test match, here we go. It is our usual sort of pitch. Wickham is coming out. I'm going with Bishop because I don't feel there's a different with the bat. And Bishop is a genuine... Oh, we've gone down to three and a bit stars. Just as I was getting ahead of my stations. Okay, halfway through the game. Won't surprise you, we got bowled out for 126. We've got problems. Lewis is not an international cricketer. His average of 26 from 31 games is horrendous. He's still in my team, though, and I'm still picking him. So 
question marks on me there. <laughs> we just need better players, but they just don't exist. Finley Beans 97 holders England together. We chip away nicely to be 87 behind. Like, if we just scored 200 again, we're in this game. Series done. Lose 3-0. Lose by 10 wickets. We get bowled out for 193. Griffiths was 72. Lewis was 64. But look, Samaru gone, out, retired her, and then just blown away. Eves has had a great series for them. Just chipping away nicely. Not too expensive about what he does. It's a disappointing end. It's a disappointing end because I really wanted us to be better than that. We win five. We lose eight on the episode. I feel like we didn't do great with the ball. Anderson and Gamroot both a little bit out of form. And with the bat, Hilton and Samaru, pretty good. And again, one, two, three, four, top six, averaging less than 25. Puts us firmly in our place in the Test World Championship. But I'm going to take the positives out of this. We've won some good series. We beat New Zealand 3-0, which is a, a monstrous effort. We've built some good players. We've got Thorne, who could one day be the number one all-rounder in the world, averaging nine. Ned and Thorne are brilliant. Gamroot is up there. But the thing is, we're finishing the episode in a better position than when we first started the series, and it's taken us 11 years to get to this point. So I'm going to take some pride in that, knowing that maybe some of these next generation of players are not too far away. Rampersdad's gone and played three games this year and averaged 59. Beckford is getting there, 16 games averaging 47. CC Lane is just carrying drinks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.